Hello, and thank you for joining today's webcast, New COVID-19 Vaccines in Canada, an overview of Novavax, Nuvaxovid, and Medicago COVID funds. The Public Health Agency of Canada is partnering with Canvax to produce learning resources for healthcare providers on vaccines and vaccine confidence. We value your feedback and use information collected to inform us about the future products. Please take two minutes and complete an evaluation survey at the conclusion of the webcast. The link can be found in the description on YouTube and on the canvax.ca website. I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Iman Abdeshukri, who is a nurse advisor with the Public Health Agency of Canada. Over to you, Iman. Thank you. After this webcast, you should be able to discuss with your clients the clinical evidence for the Novovax, Nuvaxovid, and Medicago Covifens COVID-19 vaccines. You should also be able to summarize the recommendations from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, also known as NACI, for their use of vaccines. Let's start with an overview of the indications, clinical evidence, and characteristics of the new Vaxovid and Covifens COVID-19 vaccines. The new Vaxovid COVID-19 vaccine was a first COVID-19 recombinant protein subunit vaccine authorized in Canada. It has been authorized for use in adults who are 18 years of age and over for a two-dose primary series. The active ingredient of the new Vaxovid vaccine consists of a pur purified full-length SARS-CoV-2 recombinant spike protein nanoparticle administered as a co-formulation with the adjuvant matrix M. Nuvaxovid presents a good safety profile. Side effects were typically mild and resolved on their own within one to two days. The typical side effects included fatigue, headache, and muscle pain. Side effects occurred more frequently after the second dose and were more common in adults 18 to 64 years of age than in older adults. For details on the safety of the Nuvaxovid vaccine, you should refer to the product monograph NACI statement and your provincial or territorial educational materials. Clinical trial data available to date shows that the Nuvaxovid vaccine was a efficacious in preventing confirmed symptomatic COVID-19 disease in the short term. Clinical trials conducted prior to approval showed that beginning one week after the second dose, the efficacy of the vaccine against symptomatic mild, moderate, and severe illness was 90% in participants 18 years of age and older. However, it should be noted that there is currently no data on the effectiveness of the vaccine against the Omicron variant as clinical trials were conducted before the emergence of Delta and Omicron variants. The Covifens COVID-19 vaccine is the first virus-like particle COVID-19 vaccine authorized in Canada. Covifens was authorized for use in adults 18 to 64 years of age and may be used as part of a two-dose primary series. It is not currently authorized or recommended for use as a booster dose. The Covifens COVID-19 vaccine is an adjuvanted vaccine consisting of recombinant SARS-CoV-2 spike glycoproteins stabilized in the perfusion conformation that are produced by transient expression in Nicotiana benthamiana plants and become membrane embedded in self-assembled envelope virus-like particles. The vaccine also contains the adjuvant system 03, AS03, the vaccine is supplied as a vial of antigen and a vial of adjuvant that must be mixed prior to administration. The virus-like particles work by mimicking the natural structure of the virus and trigger the immune system to generate an immune response that will develop antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Overall, the Covifens vaccine was well tolerated in clinical trials. Adverse events after vaccination were usually mild or moderate intensity and resolved within one to three days. For details on the safety of Covifens, you should refer to the product monograph, NACI statement, and your provincial or territorial education materials. In clinical trials, the efficacy of Covifens in preventing confirmed symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infection at least seven days after the second dose was 71%. 
The effectiveness of this vaccine against the Omicron variant is unknown, as it was tested in clinical trials that occurred before its emergence. The duration of protection is also unknown. In this table, we summarize and compare the new Vaxovid and Covifens vaccines. These vaccines are both given as a 0.5 milliliter dose and is supplied in 10 doses per vial. The Nuvaxovid vaccine is available in a single 5 milliliter vial, whereas the Covifens vaccine has, two, has a two vial presentation that must be mixed as previously mentioned. In general, contraindications to both vaccines include allergic reactions to a vaccine component or its container. While rare, they can range from mild cutaneous reactions to anaphylaxis. Nuvaxovid and Covifens both contain polysorbate 80. Covifens may also contain trace amounts of PEG, canamycin, and carbonicillin. Noting the potential allergens, these vaccines may be considered despite a history of confirmed allergy based on consultation with an allergist or other appropriate physician. In addition, clinical trial data for Nuvaxovid have identified cases of myocarditis and or pericarditis. Additional information is provided in the product monograph and NACI statements. It is important to note that availability of vaccine will be an important factor to consider when discussing vaccine options with patients. At the time of this recording, on May 4th, 2022, the Covifens vaccine is unavailable in Canada. However, the new Vaxovid supply is available. Availability of vaccines should be validated at the time of discussion with the patient. In summary, the new Vaxovid and Covifens COVID-19 vaccines can be administered as part of a two-dose primary vaccination series. In addition, Nuvaxovid may be used as a booster dose. It is important to note that the Nuvaxovid COVID-19 vaccine is authorized for individuals over the age of 18 years, while the Covifens COVID-19 vaccine is only authorized for those who are 18 to 64 years of age. While the minimum authorized interval is defined as 21 days indicated in the product monograph for both vaccines, NACI recommends an interval of eight weeks between doses. There's emerging evidence that longer intervals between the first and second doses of COVID-19 vaccines result in, in more robust and durable immune response and higher vaccine effectiveness. Now let's pause for a moment to test your knowledge on some of our key takeaways. So true or false, the COVID-19 vaccine may be administered to any adult 18 years of age and older. Okay, so the answer is false. Covifens is currently only authorized for adults 18 to 64 years of age. And now for our next question, true or false? Although the authorized interval between the first and second dose is 21 days for both the Nuvaxovid and Covifens COVID-19 vaccines, NACI recommends an interval of eight weeks between doses. The answer is true. NACI recommends a longer interval of eight weeks. As mentioned, evidence continues to emerge suggesting a longer interval results in a more robust and durable immune response and higher vaccine effectiveness. In the first part of the video, we reviewed the indications, clinical evidence, and characteristics of the new Vaxovid and Covifens COVID-19 vaccines. In the next few slides, we will review the recommendations from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization regarding their use in Canada. NACI makes recommendations for the use of vaccines currently or newly approved for use in humans in Canada, including the identification of groups at risk for vaccine preventable diseases for whom vaccination should be targeted. In developing recommendations, NACI reviewed clinical trial data on the safety and efficacy, including immune response data on the Nuvaxovid and Covifens COVID-19 vaccines, as well as the ethical considerations on their use in the current context of the pandemic. For the primary COVID-19 vaccine series, NACI preferentially recommends a complete series with an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine if there are no contraindications. Alternately, 
an authorized recombinant protein subunit COVID-19 vaccine, Nuvaxovid, or recombinant virus-like particle COVID-19 vaccine, Covifens, may be offered to individuals who are not able or willing to receive an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. The viral vector COVID-19 vaccines from AstraZeneca and Janssen may be offered only when all other authorized COVID-19 vaccines are contraindicated. For booster doses following completion of a primary series, NACI also preferentially recommends mRNA COVID-19 vaccines if there are no contraindications. Booster doses should be offered on or more than six months after the completion of the primary series. Alternately, a booster dose of a recombinant protein subunit COVID-19 vaccine like Nuvaxovid may be offered at least six months following the completion of a primary COVID-19 vaccine series to adults without contraindications to the vaccine who are not able or willing to receive an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. There are important additional details regarding selection of COVID vaccines available in the full NACI statements for the Nuvaxovid and Covifens vaccines. There are also updated information on vaccine selection as well as booster doses in the Canadian Immunization Guide. Web links to these publications are found on the last slides of this presentation. There are situations where it would be convenient and efficient to provide a COVID-19 vaccine dose at the same time as another vaccine. Unnecessarily delaying one vaccine or another may result in missed doses should the patient forget to return or not show at the next appointment. For adults and adolescents, COVID-19 vaccines may be given on the same day or at any time before or after non-COVID-19 vaccines that include live and non-live vaccines. However, post-market surveillance for some vaccines may be in earlier stages and administering them alone can assist with the assessment of any adverse events following immunizations by preventing erroneous attribution to the vaccine. You should also know that no specific safety concerns have been identified to date with regards to simultaneous administration of COVID-19 vaccines, but there are currently limited data available on whether the reactogenicity of COVID-19 vaccines is increased with simultaneous administration of other vaccines. As this area is evolving, you should always consult with the Canadian Immunization Guide for up-to-date details and guidance on informed consent. Here are some key takeaways from the NACI recommendations provided on the previous slides. NACI continues to preferentially recommend mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, both primary series and boosters when there are no contraindications. However, some individuals may have hesitancy specific to mRNA vaccines and desire alternate options. In these individuals, you may consider the Nuvaxovid for those 18 years of age and older, or the Covifens for those 18 to 64 years of age. The Nuvaxovid may also be offered as a booster for those 18 years of age and older. Let's put the recommendations from this video into action through a case scenario. Melanie is 28 years old. She is a frontline service provider who received one dose of Pfizer BioNTech Comirnaty COVID-19 vaccine four months ago and is overdue for a second dose. She explains at the time of her first dose, as there were no options, she received Comirnaty. However, she is wary of mRNA vaccines. She heard that alternatives may be available and is interested in receiving one of the recently authorized COVID-19 vaccines. She did some research at home to learn more about it. Could Melanie receive the Covifens or Nuvaxovid vaccine for the second dose of her primary series? How could you respond to her request? Let's have a look at the clinical considerations that support the choice of vaccine for Melanie's second dose in her primary series of COVID-19 vaccine. 
according to the product monograph, indications for Covifens, the vaccine is indicated for primary COVID-19 vaccine series in adults who are between 18 to 64 years of age, and Nuvaxovid is indicated for primary COVID-19 vaccine series in adults who are 18 years of age and older. An mRNA vaccine is the preferred vaccine for Melanie. However, after counseling, if she is still unwilling to take an mRNA vaccine, she may be offered one of the other two types of vaccines, depending on which are available at the time. We can compassionately solicit Melanie's concerns and listen to her actively. We can ask her in a respectful manner why she is considering the Covifens or Nuvaxovid vaccine options and what makes her feel that these vaccines are the safest. It is important that we actively listen to identify and acknowledge Melanie's concerns. We can ask her what her particular concerns about these vaccines are. For example, I'm hearing that you have concerns about the mRNA vaccines. Does that sound right? When discussing with Melanie, we can identify whether the sources of her concerns are based on accurate information or misinformation. We can respectfully ask Melanie if she's interested in further discussing her personal risks for COVID-19 and your recommendations for protecting her best. Without inundating her with information, we can integrate her personal context to reliable facts and statistics. However, we must respect her choice if she's not interested. Information that you may share with her include advising her that it is strongly recommended that she receives the mRNA vaccines as there is more data showing their effectiveness and much more safety data to demonstrate that the risk of adverse events is rare. At this time, data on the efficacy and safety of Covifens and Nuvaxovid vaccines are significantly more limited than for mRNA vaccines. Further, real-world data are not yet available and clinical trials are too small to detect rare risks. Still, Covifens and Nuvax Ovid may be options to complete her primary COVID-19 vaccine series should she decide to receive one of the mRNA vaccines depending on vaccine availability. A real-life discussion would allow you to capture more relevant information on a patient's unique context, values, and beliefs. It is important to address those using a culturally appropriate and accessible language and approach. Make sure to use plain language and avoid scientific jargon. Help support them in making the choice to be vaccinated against COVID-19. This concludes our video on new COVID-19 vaccines in Canada, an overview of Novovax, Nuvaxovid, and Medicago Covifens. To remain up to date on vaccine recommendations and practices, subscribe to receive email updates from NACI, including newly released statements and updates to the Canadian Immunization Guide. For more of our webinars, please visit the following websites. We'd love to know what you think. Please take two minutes to complete an evaluation survey. The link can be found in the description on YouTube and on the canvax.ca website. Thank you again for viewing.